Yeah, one zero double three. Hello, I am Professor Prema. I just wanted to know if you can take one uh, project uh, title and tell us uh, from uh, the, uh, for example, for a B Tech uh, student project, what all modules uh, you expect the student to cover for a given project title? Some sample projects you can just discuss uh, so that we can also okay expect similar things from our students. I will answer with respect to networking project. This may vary depending on the area. Since this short course is on networking and I work in networks, I will talk about networks related projects what I expect and uh, even within networks um, I do more systems work which involves system building um, and not so much theory. Uh, there will be some theory and understanding involved, but uh, uh, there will also be a significant portion of implementation and evaluation. So, I will um, not in terms of modules, but uh, the student is expected to understand the problem statement, is expected to then uh, well the solution may be in sometimes given so sometimes the details of the solution has to be worked out by the student and uh, typically as I said my projects are implementation heavy, there is a large portion of effort spent in implementation and in evaluation. Uh, so, there will be coding and in evaluation they have to discuss experiment setup with me, come up with experiment setup and uh, uh, the results we will jointly discuss. There also I will expect some initiative among students to interpret the results. One tendency among students is to just present the results and expect interpretation from the from the uh, guide. Uh, this can be initial hand holding can be done, but over time they should develop the ability to interpret the results and potentially design new experiments. So, these are the aspects I will expect uh, some aspects of uh, system design, some aspects of implementation and evaluation interpretation of results. I hope that answered your question. No sir, I want to know the problem title, one, one or two examples you can take specific problem computer network related only, specific problem title and under that okay, project what are the things expected from the student. This okay, is for example, okay, error detection techniques, okay, suppose this is a project title, so what are different types of error detection okay, algorithms are expected, how, how analysis has to be carried out. So, like that if you take a background, give us some hints, so it will help us. The error detection technique is too vast. Uh, I can give examples of BTEC projects which my students have done, but they will be too specific. So, for example, one uh, student did a project on uh, audio based uh, communication between two cell phones, uh, not human audio, but they generate audio tones and uh, they are able to convey bits from uh, one phone to the other, one smartphone to the other. So, this involved uh, you know aspects of understanding how uh, physical layer encoding can be done, uh, framing can be done and uh, uh, he had to understand the frequency response of the channel. The student then had to write some code in Android and uh, then evaluate the system, how many bit errors are there, what does it depend on, things like that. Yeah, 1043. Uh, my question is, as a lecturer, is it a good practice to incorporate videos which have been shoot by other faculties in my presentation? Uh, in your presentation, uh, it depends on what presentation it is. I mean, if it is you are teaching someone uh, and if the material is not copyrighted then uh, sure with attribution you can use it, there is no problem with that. Uh, if it is a presentation where you are presenting your research work then it is generally not a good idea because uh, 
it is the research work means your own original, uh, but if you are teaching someone something and uh, some other instructor has presented some material uh, in a good way. So, there is no reason why you cannot use that uh, I mean unless of course, that material is copyrighted. Uh, yeah, 1317 so, regarding uh, the simulation in uh, like we have some project in uh, network simulation that is NS3 uh, installing in simulator itself a tedious job up to what extent we expected the student to deliver to in that case suppose they want to implement some algorithm in Manet. So, up to what extent we can analyze the student they do their project successfully. Uh, installation may be a tedious job, but it is a one time thing it may take uh, I mean there are for NS3 or NS2 there are lot of installation instructions available on the web and uh, one must be proficient enough to follow those instructions. There may be problems you may run into typically, but usually it resolves within a few days or a week which is a small period of time in a project, project is usually semester or two semesters long. So, you spend a few days over a week doing the initial installation that is ok. Uh, yeah, and after that uh, they have to use that installed setup to simulate whatever protocol behavior they want to. Ok sir, so one more query I had like in a group of student there might be only one or two student really deliver something rest are some sort of attached to them. So, how can I evaluate such a student in a like whole projects? Yeah, so while uh, th there has to be a um, evaluation where you ask the students questions and uh, if you find that someone has not contributed much then that person's mas marks must be reduced correspondingly. Uh, so, that they get what they deserve and in the future those who do not put in effort will not expect to get full marks. So, you have to make that judgment during the demo or viva and it is it is often very easy just ask a few questions and uh, even during a demo you should ask you should not uh, allow the students to decide what roles they play. So, uh, you should on the spot select which student has to show which part of the demo. Uh, so, you know this kind of things will discourage them to um, not do any work. Yeah, 1 to 9 5. Yeah, good morning sir, um, this is Victor Daniel from Geetam University at Good morning. Uh, my question is when we are giving the technical presentation, uh, let us say I take some 3 to 4 algorithms and I do some analysis on those algorithms and compare them and finally, I say that this is the best algorithm in terms of uh, performance and uh, and I give the rankings for all, all those algorithms. My question is, is it compulsory that we should also mention that why this algorithm is doing better uh, in com, uh, when we compare it with the uh, other algorithms. Yes, uh, it, it is generally not sufficient to just present a result, uh, you have to go into some amount of depth as to why that particular behavior you are observing. Uh, you know sometimes you know simulators have bugs, students programs have bugs. Uh, there are no programs without bugs. So even programs written by experienced people have people have bugs. So uh, is the result you are presenting due to some program bug, simulation bug, or is it actual algorithm behavior? At least that you must be able to tell confidently. So whatever behavior is there, you have to look for consistency in your graphs and uh, evaluation plots, and explain that behavior as much as possible. If there is a sudden performance dip in some case, you should explain that. If there is a crossover in performance comparison between two algorithms at some point in a parameter space, you have to explain that, try and explain that. So, evaluation has to deal with all these things. 1175. Yeah, good morning, sir. Good Suppose morning. Uh, there are three students in a group for project and uh, they have done different work. Suppose one has done implementation work, second one has done uh, other work like the documentation work. So, at which basis the uh, evaluation can be done in this case? That is the question. Different work has been done by the different different students in a group. Then, what is the basis to evaluate them? What Usually, do you think? this uh, the split cannot be along the lines of you know someone does all the coding, someone does the report. 
that way split is not a good idea you know within the coding if some student writes one portion of the code another student writes another portion of the code that is all right similarly within a report one person writes one portion another person writes another portion or within evaluation you know someone experiments along uh, some parameter space and another person conducts a separate set of experiments that is fine typically it's not a good idea to leave all the technical work to one person whereas the report writing is left to another person that's not a good idea one more question is there sir yeah. if uh, after completion of the project students want to publish in different journals then which uh, which journals we can suggest them to publish the work there is no specific What answer to this the the choice of journal or conference you know it comes with experience it depends on the area sometimes it also changes for new areas so you have to you know keep track of who you consider are leaders in the field see where they publish you will also get a good sense of you know good conferences and good journals give good reviews whether they accept or reject good feedback they give they explain why your paper is accepted or rejected so that uh, quality of feedback is a judge, is a metric of how good that uh, venue for publication is so i i am just giving you a meta answer because there is no specific answer 1032 hello yeah i can hear you Please uh so usually uh, experts experts say that uh, project is amount of effort the student applies but student is not able to achieve the result so what is the justification that we make usually experts says that we see the amount of effort project is a process project is not the result so if uh, external examination this is uh, just can you say the evaluation criteria how to judge uh, with effort and result external examiners who evaluates will go for result okay student might achieve result up to some extent but not 100% then how will you justify this yeah uh, see the expectation of result will depend on what project it is if it is a class project then the expectation of result should be quite low because there is not much which can be achieved within 3 or 4 months of a semester if it is a a uh, btech project for one year even then it is often not possible to achieve uh, you know good level of result um, but the expectation of results will go up when you go when you talk about masters project or a phd thesis even more phd thesis is almost fully judged up based on the results not on the process uh, but i would say that for btech project and uh, class projects emphasis on results can be less and i always even for mtp projects mtech projects uh, uh, we evaluate a lot of effort which has gone gone in it's not just the end result the external examiner also has to be you know told the same uh, many times in some projects there are often uh, things beyond your control like uh, there are some students who have done kernel driver related projects there often times it is very difficult to debug certain things so one has to judge what effort the student has put in but there must be some learning some learning for the student some learning for you as a guide what learning what lessons have you learned failure doesn't mean uh, no lessons learned failure should mean some lessons learned what approach was right what approach was wrong you know those things must be documented those cannot be called end results but they are good learnings all the same Be, being an instruction instructor to uh, research fellow if i have to help students for defining problem especially in computer networking and by considering the various layers of computer networking how should i proceed for uh, giving suggestion for defining problem in that particular regard i would like to request you to convey certain tips how should proceed i am a systems person i am heavily biased towards systems so i would say that uh, there should be a lot of system building effort which happens uh, 
uh, and the problems will arise themselves when you build uh, large systems then the problem statements will sort of arise by themselves. So, I, I would not uh, you know the problem statement does not have to be at least at the B tech level or even sometimes at the M tech level the problem statement can simply be a significant implementation project and from the implementation uh, subsequent to the implementation you can do an evaluation and they, that will point out scope for optimization scope for uh, further improvements. So, I am telling you a possible approach to defining projects. So, just just go ahead and define implementation projects. So, one more question. Hello, good morning sir. Good morning. So, my question is uh, pertaining to the testing of uh, networking projects. So, what are the testing mechanisms specific to the networking projects and uh, the load balancing fault tolerance suppose I want to test any testing tools are available and in the evaluation process what percentage should be ascribed to the testing procedures. There is no specific answer to what is a test procedure for fault tolerance. Uh, so, in that sense I am not able to understand the question whether it is fault tolerance of a routing protocol or a uh, server implementation what is it it depends there is no specific answer for uh, what is a test mechanism for fault tolerance. How long it will take for the response and all. So, efficiency of the application I want to check then are there any specific tools which will allow enable me to check it for how many users or suppose I have to go for the replicated servers and all for redefining the network um, architecture. One of my colleagues uh, works in server performance modeling Varsha uh, Apte. So, there are modeling tools available which will allow you to test whether a server can uh, support hundreds or thousands of users without actually uh, implementing such a server. So, by doing some micro benchmarks one can measure the server delay database uh, delay for a particular kind of query and feed it into the model and that will then tell you an estimate of how well that particular server implementation will perform. So, you can look at some of her work her publications there are tools also available for such performance analysis for server systems. And uh, another question I am having and in the institution where I am teaching most of the applications they operate at the application layer of TCP IP model. So, can you name some network projects which operate at a different layers and what is the suitable language for implementing these? The networking project can be at uh, pretty much any layer. Uh, one class project I give my students regularly is uh, I ask them to de design a communication system using torch lights. So, only using torch lights they are supposed to communicate certain bits from one team to another. So, that involves physical layer that involves uh, link layer uh, some aspects of MAC layer. So, uh, another project could be I have asked students in the past to implement a routing protocol on a wireless multi hop network. So, these are some possible projects at different layers of the network stack. Sir, another part of the question also which is the suitable language for implementing these? Oh, it need not in involve any long language for example, the torchlight communication has no language they are in some sense defining the language. So, if it is implementation it depends on the platform sometimes it is C sometimes Java works uh, or if it is a chat kind of application even high level scripting languages like Python may work. Almost all languages these days uh, except low level C have good libraries for uh, doing network socket programming. Java, Python all those have very good language uh, uh, library support. Go ahead 1275. Now, sir I am repeating my question what would be the optimum length of a title for a research project as well as for a research paper. 
and my another question is how do we differentiate a two set program defined by two separate student with the same technique like a socket the answer to the first question is there is no uh, length restriction for title so typically one to two lines is the thumb rule beyond two lines it rarely goes okay so that that is the second part of the question i could still not hear second question is how do we differentiate a two chat program defined by two separate students based on the same technique like a socket they both have used a socket so i want to differentiate whether it is a copy program or a two separate program you want to differentiate a two chat program oh you want to know whether they have copied from each other yes okay i use uh, this program called uh, sim s i m software similarity tester so just search google for software similarity sim there is a open source software which you can download which will test similarity of code written by two different groups hello sir this is triple one seven from sbit indore good morning sir good morning uh, sir our first question today is that uh, when we go for any paper writing or report writing uh, there are always two patterns of references indication which are normally used in some patterns we uh, mark 1 2 3 4 and at the end we give the complete list with the as per the ieee uh, pattern another is that we write uh, the initials of the author uh, like datta et al 1994 or something like that so uh, for which one will be the better option uh, as far as the technical papers are concerned or the technical reports are concerned the second style which you mentioned uh, i have not seen any recent paper uh, it's probably gone out of style and uh, i don't think any conference or journal insists upon one style versus other if they insist they will tell you okay uh, sir secondly you during your video which we have seen just now you were talking about the pipelined evaluation system Uh, so it is requested if you can throw some more light on that pipeline evaluation system for the project of the student yeah so pipeline means that uh, when one student is getting evaluated for the first portion of the project uh, after that he moves on to evaluation of second portion of the project then the second student uh, starts evaluation of the first portion of the project so imagine you know eight people sitting in a row eight uh, evaluators so each student moves in a line one behind the other from one desk one evaluators desk to the other okay. uh, sir one more thing when uh, we were discussing or you were discussing in your talk about the not uh, to repeat or not to cut paste the data or the figures from the other reports or something but many a times it happens that the work which a student group or any teacher is doing is an extension of some old work done by someone else so in such type of cases uh, will it not be okay if we take some part from the previous work which has been done by someone else no it is not okay uh, you will have to summarize the previous work in your own words and uh, provide a reference so whoever wants to read can go and read the other report rather than reading yours the relevant portions you can summarize in your own words hello uh, myself uh, sachin de latkar uh, uh, garda instrop technology sir uh, uh, can we give the study project to the students uh, if no then why and if yes uh, what should be the nature of task uh, by study project i presume you mean uh, they go and read up some reports and uh, maybe book chapters and so on is that right on the technology sorry repeat that please uh, not just paper uh, it, it is a review of the technology yeah definitely uh, this kind of projects can be given uh, uh, do you have a follow up question 
uh, is it suitable at the undergraduate level? Undergraduates, uh, yeah, uh, they typically don't have maturity to read and understand research papers, but yeah, the level uh, has to be suitably defined. But yeah, why not at the undergraduate level? It certainly okay, is possible. Thank yeah. you. And I am talking from uh, RCID 1192. My question is: Many of students are copying their projects from internet. Uh, is there any software or any methodology to detect uh, the copying of project from internet? And my second question is: Can SIM software uh, be evaluated? Uh, can be used for uh, paper evaluation? Over to you. Yes, SIM cannot be used for. Uh, copying in reports, it is only for code. Um, for copying of projects, by copying of projects if you mean copying of code, uh, I mean you have to define projects which are not already defined. Uh, so, and you can also ask them things about the code to check whether they have written it themselves. With respect to report copying, uh, there are software. Someone mentioned uh, open source software also, which I forgot the name. There is a paid software called Turnitin, which is used in our institute, which will tell you whether a report has been copied or, uh, or is original. Does that answer your question? Turnitin is the name of the software, which is a paid software for detecting copying in reports. Okay. SIM can be used only for code. So, again, we will have to stop because we are out of time.